This video is all about the how and why to get the official Tesla data for your vehicle. It's super easy and really cool. Welcome back to Test Lucky, the YouTube channel where you can follow the adventures of Lucky the Tesla. And all of those adventures are documented in a lot of data that Tesla has about the vehicle. I've always been fascinated with any Tesla data. I've always wanted to get our official Tesla data for the vehicle, but I didn't do this until recently. I'm really glad I did. And now we're gonna jump into the how can you do this as well. Got a lot of notes today. I wanna get the details in the sequence covered very efficiently. So first of all, with the how to request your data, there are three steps to the process. Number one, go to www.tesla.com forward slash contact us and sign into your account. Number two, select in the drop down menu data privacy request and then below that there's going to be a place where you have to enter your date range. Then the third step in the process is you will get an email from Tesla that needs to verify you and collect some additional information. So this is what that email looked like and this is the five pieces of information that they will ask for. Number one, your vehicle identification number. Number two, the date range for which you would like the data. Number three, the start date of vehicle ownership. Number four, the end date of vehicle ownership. Hopefully never. We're driving lucky to infinity and beyond. And then number five, the date and reason for the last service visit. All right, so once you go through those steps and you reply to Tesla with the email in all those five things, it takes about 30 days for you to get a download link to download all of your official Tesla data for your vehicle. So in our case, I requested on the Tesla website on October 5th of 2023, and then I received my email with the download link for the data on November 8th of 2023. So that was a couple months ago. I just finally did something with the data. One word, holidays. That's it, uh, holidays. Now let's talk about the why. I'm just gonna say, why not? It's free, Tesla will send you the data. Like, why not uh, Why not take a look at it? Certain pieces of the data they sent more interesting than others. We're gonna go over right now all of the different types of data that may be included in the report that you get from Tesla. Then at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the answer to a burning question that I have had for a long time, and I'm gonna use the data that I just received. So what is the data that Tesla may send you? Here's a list, and we're gonna go through this one at a time. Number one, order details. I didn't actually get order details, which is probably because I'm a second owner. Account information. I'm going to say who cares to that one. Customer support activity. I didn't actually get that, which I thought was interesting. I've called Tesla no less than 50 times. There's lots of uh, videos from back in the day of our early Tesla ownership of everything I learned from those phone calls. but. They weren't included in the report. Service history from your ownership period. All right, so this is also in the app, very easy to access. And I just wanna say, why only my ownership period? Like when I purchase this vehicle, shouldn't I also have rights to the service history from prior to uh, my ownership experience mm, I don't really uh, I don't really get that one maybe somebody watching will know why they can't uh, send me information about service history from owner number one I was very lucky he actually put all of those service records in the glove box thank you Roman they're now in my test lucky binder which is right here all right here 
Thank you, Roman. Now, that's a little bit old school, I know. The Tesla serv mobile service guys actually think it's funny. And they're like, hey, you're the lady with the red Tesla and the red binder. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Okay, where were we on this list? Vehicle usage information. I'm just gonna say I opened up those spreadsheets. I was very confused by the data. I don't really know what I was looking for in there. That's another one. If anyone has any experience with looking at the vehicle usage data, please leave us a comment and inform us about that. Safety event camera recordings if applicable. All right, well, Lucky doesn't have sentry mode, so this is not applicable to us. Infotainment system settings information. Didn't get that. Don't know why we didn't get that. Mobile app usage information didn't get that. Don't know why we didn't get that. We did also receive something that wasn't on the list. We got vehicle details and that contains some information to verify the end date for our warranty, which is 9-11-2024, the end date for both our battery and our drive unit warranties. Also, not on this list from the Tesla website, I got a folder of invoices and in that was the one invoice from the one time that I had idle fees at the Aventura Mall Superchargers in South Florida. I've been meaning for over a year, probably two years, to do a video about my one experience with idle fees. If you guys are interested in learning about that, let me know. If I get at least three comments requesting a video about my one experience with idle fees, then I will film that video in February, I promise. Now, the big one, bingo. Supercharging history. This is the number one reason that I wanted to see my data. It was the most fascinating, it was the most useful, and now I'm gonna use that data to answer a burning question. Just what percentage of our charging is done on the superchargers versus home, charging at home. So we use superchargers all the time. And in our video that we posted last year at 127,000 miles, we report that we're extremely satisfied with the battery health of Lucky. We're coming up on five years with the vehicle, vehicle seven and a half years old. We've seen very little battery degradation and we're really pumped about how good the battery still is. And we've done a lot of supercharging. I mean, I hear, you know, people say, don't plug into the superchargers, it's gonna kill your battery. It's not been our experience, but I would still like to know exactly what percentage of supercharging do we do versus the slower charging at home. So I just wanna show you our mileage history before I show you the supercharging percentage. In the close to five years that we have owned Lucky, I have driven 117,150 miles. That was in 1,755 days. And the average miles per day, 67 miles a day, 2,003 miles a month, 24,000. 365 miles per year. That's definitely above average. I looked up the average for both the US and Florida came in just over 14,000. I've actually been driving 83 miles a day since Carly's first day of high school compared to the 67 miles a day for the life of the vehicle, which includes the pandemic, by the way. A lot of days, a lot of days that Lucky sat in the garage and didn't go anywhere. We drive Lucky a lot. Now let's look at the supercharging data. The report from Tesla covered December 10th of 2019 through October 27th of 2023. I don't know why it didn't go back to my ownership date of March 28th of 2019 like I had requested, but nonetheless, this is a good solid four years of data, 1,418 days, 1,489 charging sessions, an average about one a day, except some days we don't charge and some days we're on road trips and we charge four times. So this is the average. 29% of the 
charges to Lucky have been on the superchargers. What I was able to do with this data was to sum all the kilowatts added. 33037, that sounds like a zip code here in the Florida Keys. I think that might actually be the Tavernier uh, zip code. Then I was able to take a subset of the supercharging kilowatts added to Lucky and that number was 13824. So that comes out to 42% of the kilowatts added to Lucky were from supercharging, almost half. I think that's a lot, what do you think? By the way, I've noticed you're still here. Please go ahead and click the like button and tell the YouTube algorithm that this video brought you some value. Otherwise, I imagine you would have clicked away after like the two or three minute mark. I mean, it takes a lot of time and energy to organize these details. We hope you found this interesting. I'm also going to use this data to answer another burning question, which is a question that I get asked a lot. How much has your electric bill gone up uh, with the charging that you do at the house? So I'm going to use this data to answer that question in a future video. So you're going to want to go ahead and click the bell for notifications if you're interested in that topic and seeing this like second application of the new Tesla data. Thank you so much for watching Tesla Lucky.